there is the story of somebody who went up the ancient wise old man of Greece, Socrates, and said, how can I become better in my life? Socrates said, I have not bathed today. Can you accompany me to the stream? That man said, all right, but will you answer my question at the stream? Yes. Socrates took a dip in the water. This man also took a dip alongside. Socrates came out before him and placed his hand on the guy's head. Now he's holding his head inside the water. For the first few seconds, this man did not resist because he said he is the wisest man in Greece, so he will not make mistakes. He was surrendered. But as he started feeling suffocated, he resisted. Maybe his thinking has gone wrong. He tried to get out, but Socrates had the advantage of the superior position. He was holding him in sight. After half a minute, he thought, now I am going to die, now I am going to die. Finally, Socrates let him go. He came out. <gasps> Socrates said, what happened? If you had left me in that water for another second, my life would have left the body. Socrates said, that answers your question. You said, how can I become a better person? The answer is, when you feel so strongly about it, when you have such an intense desire, that it seems to you, if I don't change this very day, then my life is worse than death. When you have such a strong decision to change, then you will definitely become a better person. The problem is, most of us have tried to become better and then become disappointed at the results. Oh, it's too difficult. We compromise and decide, I am the way I am, let me just remain here. But then, there are instances in history of people who accomplished this amazing transformation. And actually, from being sinners, they became saints. The most common such example is of Maharshi Valmiki. Another such example is of the writer of the Hindi Ramayana, Tulsi Das. Goswami Tulsi Das, he was exceedingly attached to the world. In his particular case, the object that enchanted his mind was his wife. He was so deeply in love with his wife to the exclusion of all worldly pursuits and accomplishments that he could not bear the thought of living without her. She went for a few days to her parents' house and the longing in Tulsi Das became so deep, he said, I need to meet her now. He got out of his house. It was night time. Heavy rain was pouring from the skies, but it could not deter the yearning of Tulsi Das for his wife. He reached the stream, which was just before her parents' house. At night time, in that immense rain, no boatman was available to take us. But Tulsi Das had such a burning desire. He found a log floating by. He grabbed the log and swam across. Now when he reached the house, the obvious thing would have been to go to the front door and 
announce his presence so that he would be let in because he was the legal son-in-law. Nobody would have stopped him. But Tulsi Das was in such a hurry, he could not tolerate the delay. He found a rope hanging from the top floor where his wife's room would have been. He grabbed the rope and climbed and entered through the window. His wife was shocked to find her husband coming there in the middle of the night. She said, my dear husband, you have come here in this dark and dreary night. How did you cross the stream? He said, my luck was good. God sent a log of wood and that's what I grabbed. See, I have left it there on the other side. She looked. It was not a log of wood. It was a dead body that was floating by. His wife shuddered. My God, this, you grabbed a dead body? You were blinded in your infatuation for me. But how did you climb up? He said, you were so kind. You had hung a rope to help me up. She said, I hung no rope. Which rope are you talking about? She looked out and a snake slithered away. She said, my God, you caught that snake to climb up. You are so deeply attached to me. If you had a fraction of this love for Sri Ram, you would have become God realized. That statement hit Tulsi Das so hard. He turned around, not physically, but in his life. He decided, I need to love the Lord. And that decision he made transformed his life. He went on to be one of the most famous saints in Indian history and one of the most accomplished scholars and literary poets. The Ram Charit Manas that he has written is an astonishing text. Every time I read it, I cannot imagine how a human being could have written something where his chopais are direct translations of Upanishadic mantras. In every line he is using literary tools. He is, you could, people could do hundreds of PhDs on that one work of his. Here is an example of somebody who lifted himself up from drudgery to sublime heights. How did this transformation begin? It all started with the one decision he made. No, not this direction. This is the direction which will, my life will go towards. What I wish to say is, it is in the moments of our decisions our choices that we determine the course of our life.